Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI's study manual, ATI's T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 160. We're dealing with the concept of units of measurements. The same concept was covered in the previous edition, the fifth edition of the book. And if you're interested in getting some more practice, you will find that we have solved every single problem from the fifth edition. You will find the solutions to all of those problems from day number 1 through 80. This particular topic, units of measurement, measurements, is something you will find on day number 37, 38, and 39. In addition to that, in addition to that there is another series of videos in my, on my channel simply called basic math. If you're interested in improving your basic math skill, just type in basic math day one, nothing else, just type in basic math day one, watch the series, it has 100 videos. Of those 100 videos, the last five is where we covered this topic of units of measurements. If you want to get some more practice on this topic, you will find from day 96 to 100. Today, we'll do a problem that appears at the very bottom of page 94. On the bottom of page 94, on the bottom of page 94, we are being asked to convert 432 grams into ounces, into ounces. Let's see what we can do. Well, 432 grams is what is given to us, and we can, we're being asked to convert it into ounces, which means we want the ounce on the top, and we want to get rid of these grams. So the grams are going to go on the bottom. Now the question is, how many how many grams in one ounce? How many grams in one ounce? One ounce is made up of 28 grams, and this is something you simply have to know by heart. This is called the conversion factor. This is something. This is something you simply have to know by heart the conversion factor. You simply have to memorize that one ounce is made up of approximately 28 grams. Otherwise, you can't do we, otherwise we cannot do this problem, we cannot get to this stage. So this is your conversion factor. One ounce is same as 28 grams, so we are dividing top and bottom by one. We so rather we have this top quantity and the bottom quantity are equal to each other, therefore this is just one. Why are we doing this thing? So that we can convert our unit from grams to ounces. So now we have grams on the top here. We have a unit of gram on the top and we have a unit of gram on the bottom. We can divide top and bottom by grams and it goes away. There you go. So the answer simply is, this is 432 divided by 1, so it's 432 times 1 is just 432, and 1 times 28 is just 28. These grams cancel out with this grams, and we are left with the unit that we are looking for, ounces. Only thing that is left here, for a, only thing that is left here is for us to figure out what this quantity is, which you can do it with a calculator, or we can do it by hand, and I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Okay, this is going to take some time. So if you're bored, just turn it off the video. If you're not, you can watch what happens. How to convert this thing by hand. Shall we? Let's do it here. We need the room. So I'm going to raise all of this thing. We're just simply going to divide 432 divided by 28. Four hundred and thirty-two divided by twenty-eight. We're going to try to do as fast as we can. Okay? This 28 is an even number, 432 is an even number, let's divide top and bottom by 2. How many 2's does 4 have? 4 has 2 2's. 4 is made up of 2 2's. How many 2's does 3 have? 3 has 1 2. After we take away 2 from the 3, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 2, becomes a 12. And 12 has 6 2's. And if you didn't understand what I just did, you can do it longhand and you will understand it. Watch what happens. We are dividing 432 by 2. We are dividing 432 by 2. Watch what happens. 
how many twos does four have? Four has two twos. Four has two twos. You see, four has two twos. Then we get to three. How many how many twos does three have? Three has three has one twos. Three has one two. After we take away the two from the threes, we have a remainder of one. What happens to, after we take away two from the threes? We have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins the two, becomes twelve. That one goes and joins the two, and becomes a twelve. And twelve has six twos. That's what we did here. Now we have to divide the bottom by two. Two has one twos, and eight has four twos. Oh, again, even numbers. Two sixteen and fourteen. They are both even number. We can go one more round. How many twos does two have? Two has one twos. Two has one twos. How many twos does one have? One has no twos. One has no twos. One is too, too, too puny. It doesn't have any two. What does he do? Well, he goes to his next store guy and he says, look, I got to take on two. I can't take, take it on because I'm too tiny. I'm too puny. I can't take him on by myself. Can you please join me so that we can beat the crap out of him together? So he goes and joins the six and becomes 16. And 16 has eight twos. Let's do, let's do it together here, right here. How do we divide two sixteen by two? Well, 2 has 1 2's. 2 has 1 2's. 1 comes down. How many 2's does 1 have? 1 has no 2's. 1 has no 2's. So what does he do? He goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. He goes to 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 8 2's. I'm going to erase this part. I want more. There you go. Since we divide the top by 2, we must divide the bottom by 2. 14 has 7 2's. Because since 7 is a prime number, and since 108 is not divisible by 7, we're going to have to do the long division. Let's do the long division. We can divide 107, 108 by 7. Now, before we do that, I'm going to show you something else. Okay, watch here. We first divide top and bottom by 2. When we divide the 432 by 2, we got 216. And we got 28 divided by 2 is 14. And we realize that 14 is an even number. And 216 is an even number. So we divide top and bottom by 2 one more time. Instead of doing it two baby steps, we could have simply done in one step. Divide top and bottom by 4. But how do we know if a given number is divisible by 4? How can you tell simply by looking at it that that number is in fact a multiple of 4? That's what you're going to learn in this series, basic math series. Be patient. It starts out very slowly with timetables. But gradually, by the time you get to day 20, you begin to learn how to divide things. And the rule is that as long as the last two digits of the numbers are divisible by 4, the last two digits of 432 is 32. Since 32 is divisible by 4, 432 must be divisible by 4. So let's get going. And 28, of course, is divisible by 4. How many 4 does 4 have? How many 4 does 4 have? 4 has 1, 2. 1, 4. How many 4 does 3 have? 3 has no 4. 3 is too puny. What does it do? It goes to your next, next door neighbor and says to him, he knocks on the door and Mr. Two comes out and says, Look, I'm too puny. I can't take on this guy. Can we just join forces so we can beat the crap out of him? So he goes and joins two and becomes 32. And 32 has eight fours. They can give him eight punches. 28 has seven fours. You see? 108 divided by seven. We're going to do that by long hand. 108, remember it. 108, we have to divide it by seven. So let's get going. It doesn't take that long. It only takes a few seconds if you know what you're doing. 10 has 1 7. Remainder is 3. 8 comes down and becomes 38. 7 5 is 35. 7 5 is 35. You have to know your timetables. And the remainder is 3. We stick a decimal here. And becomes a 30. We stick a decimal. becomes a 30. 30 is made up of 4 7s. 4 7s are 28. Becomes a 2. We stick a 0 there. And 20 is we can pretend that 20, we can pretend that 20 is approximately 21. And 21 has 3. But it is not 21, it is 20. So it is, this is not exactly 15.43, it is approximately 15.43. Because we are pretending at the end that it is 21, it is 20 actually. So the answer is, the question was 432, 400. So the conclusion is that 432 gram is approximately, why approximately? Because it's not exact. It's not 21, it's 20. We, can, we pretended that it was 21. Therefore, it's approximately. 432 gram is approximately 15.43 ounces. Do you understand? In the book.
in the book I'm going to point it out to you so that you don't you don't get confused in the book the answer is 15.238 ounces or if you like 15.238 that, that's what 15. Uh, let me make sure. 15.238. That's right. In the book, the answer is 15.238. We came up with 15.43. What's the reason? The reason is because the reason is because we pretended we pretended that one ounce is approximately 28 gram. But in the book, when they do their work, when they do their work, they're a little bit more precise. They say that one ounce is approximately 28.35 grams and if you would if you work with this conversion factor you will get this answer an answer that is a little bit more precise but it's going to require a lot more work to deal with 28.35 as opposed to just 28 well which one should you opt for well the answer is 28 gram is good enough for the exam you must always remember the nature of the beast that you're dealing with you're not dealing with an open edit exam it's a multiple choice exam. Nobody is asking you precisely how many ounces is 432 grams. That's not what they're asking you. They're simply asking you, are you able to pinpoint, are you able to recognize which one of these four quantities might equal to 432 gram? And answer choices are not that close to each other. They are, answer choices are far apart. So you put one answer choice, if you, if you did the conversion factor of 28 grams and you arrive at 15.43, and one of the answer choices says 15 ounces approximately or one of the answer choices 15.2 ounces but that's your answer because all the others are going to be more than that and or less than that they're far apart you should have no problem at all recognizing the right answer by using approximate number for conversion factors you don't have to do the extra work to do the precise conversion answers are far apart do you understand learn to approximate learn to save time that was lesson number 160 I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.